the Bitcoin Foundation um, has taken some criticism in the past by some members in the community and us specifically as well for you know trying to support uh, the the issuance of regulations by regulators in government. And, um, you know, they got what they asked for in the bit license, but it turned out to be too big of a pill for them to swallow, it seems like. Uh, uh, the the head of the Bitcoin, or the general counsel, what is he, the Jim Harper, he's a... Yeah, his, he's a title big... is, his title is public, or global policy counsel. Okay, okay, global policy counsel. So he's, he's a big so, shot. Yeah, he's basically just the foundation's lawyer. That's what I take from it. Okay, alongside um, Patrick Merck, who's the general counsel. So I don't know what the difference exactly is between oh, general he, counsel and global policy counsel. The global, he probably is just specifically focuses on governments then. Gotcha. All right, so what um, what was Jim Harper's uh, you know formal response to the bit license regulations that were proposed in New York? Yeah, so... He wrote an open letter to the New York Department of Financial Services, uh, and it was published on the Bitcoin Foundation's blog. And he basically, really all he said was that the 45-day public commenting period was too short and that the foundation should um, release the risk assessment they did for Bitcoin when they first started their uh, research for mm. the bit license regulation. Um, and that's pretty much all I said. He gave a suggestion for a different process they could use for um, opening uh, future drafts of the legislation to the public. Um, but he didn't he didn't criticize the regulation at all. He just said that the department needs to communicate with the public better. Wow, I'm surprised he I'm surprised he didn't go farther and actually criticize parts of the regulation. Because I know that mem certain members of the Bitcoin Foundation do have issues with parts of the bit license. So, you know, why not come out and be public about specifically what parts? Just, you know, just asking for an extension in the comment period, that would be great. I think that they should do it. But, you know, when, when you're the global policy council, you know, the lead government lawyer... Uh, for the Bitcoin Foundation, like you know, take you should take um, you should take a bigger step, you know, uh, for for advocating for what you think would be best for the community and and the industry. Like chances are they're not going to listen to you anyway for the 45 day extension or whatever. But you know, yeah, it's almost up, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I I feel like we're we're about halfway through at this point. Um, maybe maybe we're farther. I'm not sure, but you know, that's when you think about it, that's only that's only a month and a half, really. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like that's that's not a lot of time, and the community is barely beginning to digest all of this. Um, I did my interview with Eric Voorhees last week, and um, super interesting. I super recommend you know everyone watching this if you haven't read it or seen it yet. Um, I'll put the link in the description. Uh, for the interview, but you know, Eric Voorhees got into some really interesting issues about privacy of the bit license reg uh, regulations and um, how it, how it'll also uh, hurt businesses in the free market from from getting started. And you know, if, if that's not getting mentioned by Jim Harper from the Bitcoin Foundation, if the real issues aren't getting tackled by the people who have the most influence, then you know, the worst is going to happen. The worst possible outcome is going to is, is going to yeah. happen. Yeah, um, all all Harper said in his letter, um, like directly referring to the legislation, was that um, the proposed regulations were very sweeping and could and would likely affect people even outside of New York, even outside of the United States. But f from what I took from it, at least, he didn't even. He didn't present that as a necessary negative of the law. He just um, he just used that as a reason for why the commenting period should be extended because people should have people need more than forty five days to read everything to like digest it and to um, like research and become familiar with the New York uh, regulatory system. Not necessarily that 
just the law on principle is bad. I got you. I got you. So does it does it seem like they're in general supporting it? I mean, I know that high profile companies with who are you know members of the Bitcoin Foundation, um, you know Coinbase and BitPay are two of the biggest ones, payment processors for Bitcoin. Uh, they have d done formal letters in the past to the New York Department of Financial Services saying that they support uh, the the general idea of a bit license and saying that they support certain regulations around Bitcoin. But, I mean, is there any indication that that the foundation will, you know, ch change course a little bit now that we know that the, the the potential regulations on the horizon um are pretty detrimental to the industry yeah it sounds like um from how i interpreted it it sounds like uh, jim harper who's acting on behalf of the foundation so you know we can safely say it was their opinion too but he hasn't he didn't come out and say that this is a good idea but the tone of his letter uh, just sounds like um, the foundation has pretty much given up, um, if if they ever were against it in the first place. But they've just they've just accepted that it's going to happen no matter what, and that um, they just want to make it as painless as possible. Because Harper's um, focus in the letter, his reason for um, extending the comment period, was to get the community more involved. So. Um, so the community and this uh, department could work together to come to um, regulation that they both agreed on. You know, so yeah. it doesn't really seem like he was outright supportive of the law, but it just kind of feels like, what I took from it at least, it kind of feels like he's just given up. The foundation has just given up and... Um, like they kind of see New of, York as a lost cause or something? Yeah. Like, um, instead of fighting it, they're just going to make it as painless as possible. For them. Because it's still going to yeah. be painful as all hell for the businesses that want to get yeah. started in New York. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, um, you know, how, how um, liberal it is. Not liberal in the political sense, but liberal as, like, uh, you know, freedom... It, you know, it doesn't matter how loose these regulations are. Um, it's still going to, you know, hinder business because it's, you know, basically telling you if you don't do this, you can't operate. And, um, yeah, you know, even if you're outside of our state, you still can't operate if you have customers that are in our state. Yeah. So, but, you know, from what I take from it and... You know, if we if we have any repeat viewers, they already know my stance on the Bitcoin Foundation. I don't think it should even exist because all they do is just you know buddy up with the governments, and they're surprised that this is what happens when they do that. But um, yeah, it like really my opinion on the Bitcoin Foundation is like don't they don't really care about um they don't really care about watching it flourish or even experimenting with the free market. You know, I wrote an op-ed article about Jim Harper's response. Um, I basically said that he did far too little. Um, he requested far too little in, in his letter. Um, and because they don't really care about, um, about saving uh, or preserving the freedom surrounding Bitcoin. Um, it's not even really on their radar, is it? Yeah. Yeah, they just care about keeping it alive long enough to make as much money as possible from these uh, membership fees and other donations they get from giant uh, businesses that accept Bitcoin and have joined the foundation. Because, you know, as long as they're doing something with the government, these mainstream companies are going to think they're doing something productive. And so they'll, you know, keep renewing their membership. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a parasitic relationship, a little bit. They're 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 just mm -hmm. sucking th these these uh these funds from these companies and using it for you know kind of controversial ends. Yeah, and you see, like my personal stance on it is, um, I obviously think it would work better on a free market. But even like if we just assume for the sake of argument that um. 
that it won't or it's it's unsure because there's a lot of people who you know obviously don't believe in a free market at all at least it's a chance to experiment in a free market you know yeah. without anybody really losing too much because there's not that many people who are like 100 percent invested in bitcoin so there, it's not like there's going to be um lives that are ruined if bitcoin fails as a result of uh of deregulation yeah so even even if you don't agree with the free market at least give us bitcoin so you can prove us wrong you know <laughs> like if if you don't let something if you don't let us experiment with it then you're not even you're never even going to have the chance to get ev evidence to prove us wrong yeah you know so at the very least it should be the freedom should be preserved so we can at least uh, you know experiment it with with liberty because it's something that just doesn't really exist anymore it is it's a very fun experiment you know it's it's some it's a technology that has never really existed before and uh we finally have a way to ha have a reliable form of money you know in our pockets or on our computers or on a piece of paper even and um you know it's cryptographically verified and has the you know the state of the art blockchain technology that was barely invented 5 years ago and regulators want to tell us how we can use that technology so yeah good luck with that